Okay, so the next step is to bring in our textures. I've got a whole bunch of textures from Mari. Uh, so we went, went through in the intro, so I'm going to connect all these in and I'll show you how we do that. First thing I'm going to do is start cleaning up our materials because this quickly gets quite large. With any look dev work, you need space to work in. So there's a few different things we can do. Uh, we can just move our materials over a bit, give us some room to work, uh, make our backdrop bigger maybe. But we can also uh, come in and just grab our chameleon area for the skin. Just tap G and that gives us a group node. I'm going to call that cam group. And now when I hit the plus, it expands out into this new sort of workspace. And when I zoom away, it goes away. So it's pretty cool. You can zoom in and see it. Now you don't see it. Now you don't. Um, it's pretty cool. I'm going to move that down. I'm going to create another DLS. So you create tons of these shading nodes. So uh, here we want a file node. And we want to bring in our textures, color. So we're only bringing in the one texture map right now. These are in UDIM format. So that's uh, UDIMs. That means I've got a whole lot of like eight different maps for the for the skin of this guy. Um, so to access the UDIMs in 3 to Light, we just need to highlight the 1001 by double clicking and type UDIM. Bam. So what I've done here, I've clicked on the out and I've selected the channel, the output, and I've connected that in to the color input. So I'm going to call this color. Chameleon color. And I'm going to copy paste that a couple times. Let's change this one to a bump. So I'm going to go ahead and bring in all the file nodes. So I'll speed this up here. Okay, so uh, what I needed to do there was just to reboot the live render to get those textures in. They're quite large textures, so I assume it was I'm just loading them in the background. Um, so we now have a UD map connected for our color. If I have a look at the color group here, of course it's going into the three light material, through to the network material, and through the rest of the system. So what I'm going to do now is connect up the bump channel. I'm gonna grab just the R channel for this one and you'll see that I can't connect that into bump normal so this is the same as in many other programs I need another DLS and I need to use a bump 2D interface a little utility node here um, to say whether it's a bump map or a tangent space normal etc and that's a bump I'm going to call this cam bump 2D and connect this in with a little bit of displacement. I probably don't need too much bump, but it's good to show anyway. I'm going to do out normal, not normal, just uh, use the out normal function and then into the material bump normal. And now we get too much detail. You're going to see that it's quite overblown and distorted, so you usually bring bump depth down quite low. Okay. So now I'm going to grab the roughness R channel. I'm going to plug that into base layer reflection roughness. And he's less wet now, and he's more in the range that we need him to be. Um, but I always like control in the actual look dev stage of that. So we're going to edit that in a second. We'll come back to him. Now, uh, the, the displacement maps here. We need a few things. We need another DLS, you guessed it. This one, uh, I'm going to use a displacement shader just to give us all the controls we need for our displacement. And first, I'm going to, uh, well, we don't actually create two displacement nodes. Um, what we want to do is add them together and then connect them to this one. 
So um, display shader. And so I need another DLS here. And with this one, I'm going to use an add double linear. So it takes two inputs and adds them together. Um, and I'm going to grab the R channel into input one and the R channel into input two. So your displacement maps could be different if they're vector, we'd be doing it differently. Um, but these are just for single channel 16-bit um, displacement map here and 32-bit here. Um, three to light automatic, they have a table on their Maya documentation which uh, tells you what it does by default in terms of color depth. If you feed it a 32-bit or a 16-bit image, uh, it, it reads it as raw by default. So you don't have to worry about um, like changing color space and stuff like that as long as you feed it the right formats. But there's a whole chart in the uh, Maya docs, but I didn't see them in the Katana docs, but it's the same behavior. Um, I connect out displacement here uh, into, I need the, that network material plug I showed before and then I also showed how to delete it. But there it is, DL displacement. Connect that in. And we now, oh, you've just seen one of the fiddly little bits of Katana. So now um, we're bringing in displacement now. We'll start actually getting some, some actual displacement on the surface and that should start working nice. So I've got a few little sections there. Um, basic look dev stuff, just combining displacement maps. Um, let's do a little bit more. Let's, let's get some control over how the roughness map works. So throw down a DLS. Uh, there's a color correction that I can use. I always lose it though, so I'm going to use the filter. DL color correction, there it is. And that one takes an input, out color input. I'm going to rename that to cam CC. Uh, and then in the color correction settings, we can just do normal the correct type stuff on it. And replace the connection for reflection roughness. And now with this node, uh, I can control. You know, I can gamma it, gamma it down to make make it more wet, and that sort of stuff as well. So we can tweak that all we want. Most of this I've, I've done on the Mari side of things. So um, done a lot of back and forth, but. Um, a little bit down might be good just to get give it a little bit more interest there so this is one of the times when you're tweaking this sort of thing that you probably want to jump to the render just make sure we're at the bottom live render and we can actually uh, I'm going to jump to my look dev scene and yeah we can spin the environment light around so this is probably a good time to test with um, a bit more of the highlights on top of it. If I look here, make sure I get my look dev balls in the scene. Um, just so I can see when these big highlight panels, where sort of where they are. Um, so you can spin that around and see it fairly easy as to what direction it's coming from. And tweak that result. So you get the idea there. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and connect the results to uh, the results of the textures to the accessories material as well. Uh, I like to keep them in groups, so I could reuse these nodes and make one big gigantic spaghetti, um, or I could just bring them in to this group node as well. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, set up some look dev stuff for this material. Uh, I'm going to speed it up and I'll be back shortly. and we're back um, with the, the metal material um, I just wanted to show some of the different sort of settings you can do different types of metals um, supports tempered metals uh, oxide thickness oxide oxide index of refraction so yeah you tweak these around and get some pretty good pretty good looks um, fairly quickly um, with that 
and I do actually have some colour and roughness for the metal base material. So I'm also going to connect up just a few of the textures to that one, just the colour and the roughness. It's going to come in there and connect those in. So I've also got um, these uh, bauble things along here and in the original concept art, um, this is uh, the original design of this chameleon is a, by an outstanding artist called NC Winters and uh, did a great design for the band Primus, it's from a, a poster, um, some poster art, but um, with that with that he had uh, these baubles were sort of like a, a really red type of metal so I'm not actually going to uh, try and bend this material to work for both we'll just create a second one for that and go through um, that process so now I've got the metal base with my Mari maps connected so it's looking a little, little rougher now um, and it's got some actual colour in there. Um, so yeah, I'm happy with that. And I'm going to come to my material assignments. So I'm going to have to... Oh, I'll need a material to assign first. So let's create another... Another DLS. And a network material. Let's call this one, um, I'm, I call them baubles in the mesh. I know they've probably got a more correct name than that, but we'll call it that for today. Um, DL material, bauble maps. I was actually going to make that a metal as well, um, but make this one a tempered metal much more shiny and we'll tweak that once so once I've got it connected um, out color into surface there we go so onto my material assignment section and okay we're gonna make a custom and I just know, I'm not even going to look for it in this case, just to teach you another different way. I'm just going to go chameleon. I know it's called bauble. So I'm just going to go slash slash star bauble star and drop it in. And that works. So if you know the names of things or you can even guess the name of things in Katana, you can often apply materials to things without even looking at a scene graph. So this, um, you know, to, to some new people this, this seems weird, but once you start using it, it just gets more and more powerful, the more sort of um, smart things you think of doing with it. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to make that a sort of a red material in the, the concept. So let's have a look at what we're getting and getting closer to where we want to be. Cool. Obviously the IOR will change it quite a lot. But we'll leave that at that for now. Um, so what we are looking at now is uh, te yeah, testing the material some more, um, making sure we're happy with, with our work. Uh, and let's say we want to bake down that work now um, to hand it off to a lighting artist. So that's what we're going to do now. So we're going to talk about look files and how we uh, how we can store that information. It's sort of just how they work to give you a bit of an idea and, and how they might be used in studios. They're used for all sorts of different stuff, but let, I'll get into that next.